Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us this evening, if you're in that time zone or afternoon, wherever you are. Um, welcome to the final in the series of Movement Strategy Implementation Lightning Talks. Um, in our session today, we have three speakers. Um, I will call out our speakers. Please just raise your hand and wave when I mention um, your name. Anthony is joining us today. He'll be speaking. Hello, Anthony. Please wave. Uh, good. Um, also joining us today is Mali from Wikimedia Norhe. Mali, please wave. <laughs> and also Nikki is joining us from Wikimedia Deutschland. Wave, Nikki. Anthony is joining us uh, from Wikimedia Tanzania uh, user group. In our session this, in our session today, um, we will be, you'll, you'll listen to our speakers talk about, um, you'll listen to our speakers talk about their ongoing projects. They'll be speaking about their movement strategy projects. These are projects that are happening across various communities currently. And these are super tangible projects. You might have asked yourself the question, if movement strategy is happening, what does it look like and what does it actually mean? So in the session today, you'll hear about people who are leading or co-leading on these projects. And you'll also learn about what movement strategy actually means in very practical terms. Um, listen out for thoughts that our speakers will be sharing um, as they share about future goals and projects. This is where you might find some inspiration or where you might find opportunities to connect, collaborate, or even um, develop some ideas for projects within your own community. Um, some quick reminders that as you're listening and something comes to mind, if there's anything you'd like to ask um, our speakers today, please drop the question in chat. Um, and when the speaker is done, we will ask the question or we will raise the question at the end, um, uh, at the end of the session. Each speaker will share their project challenges, learnings and future goals um, so feel free, yes, as they're speaking, to drop in your questions. Without further ado, we'll go to our first speaker this um, in this session. This is Anthony. Anthony, over to you. Thank you so much, Yop. Uh, as Yop introduced me, my name is Anthony Ntavango from the Wikimedia community, user in Tanzania. And my little background is that uh, I joined the Wikimedia movement like six years ago, and for this time I have been working together or collaboratively with other East African Wikimedians. In case you're wondering what are the East African Wikimedians communities, uh, we are about 11 countries uh, geographically, they are together, and some of them are near, uh, near to the East Africa region, so we term them as East African Wiki communities. And this includes uh, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi, uh, South Sudan, Ethiopia, Somalia, Zambia, Botswana, Congo, and others. So um, when I joined the Wikimedia movement, uh, and after realizing that there is this community within our region, I realized the challenge is we lack the collaboration and the coordination among ourselves in regard to uh, collaboration in doing Wikimedia Foundation projects. So next slide, Andrews. Yes, so the challenges that uh, I saw and we saw and we are trying to solve or address uh, is uh, community building. You know, in our region, we have, like, as I said, uh, like 11 countries, 11 communities, but only three of them are the recognized user groups, which is Tanzania, Uganda, and the Congo. So we saw there was a, a, an equity in different scenarios, such as capacity building and resources uh, distribution among these communities. So we decided to work together. And in 2019, two scenarios happened. We had an in-person uh, capacity building in Dar es Salaam, Tanzania. And the same year, we met for uh, we met for 
Movement Strategy uh, Summit in Kampala, Uganda. That's where we now started like coming together. Okay, guys, we have to unite and you know explore uh, some common challenges that we can solve together. So also we identified some resources that can be can help us to solve the issue of underrepresented languages in our community or in our region. Currently, we have Swahili. This is a, a unifying language that most of these communities, they do speak. But still, we have other languages that are not well represented on the wiki platforms. So we are working together using Swahili as a unifying language to make sure that uh, other languages as well that are underrepresented are, are being digitized. So, is that um, in relation to movement strategy, we are trying to experiment with new methods of community engagement, which is the establishment of uh, East African regional and thematic hub. Regional meaning geographically we are somewhat uh, located in a same area, plus the nearby countries. Also thematic, for the sense that we have a unified language, which is Swahili, that at the same time, we thought there is a need to gather around languages. Okay, next slide. Yes, so what we learned from uh, working with these communities was that um, speakers of endangered languages uh, have different ways of speaking and writing. So sometimes it's difficult to engage them collaboratively. So we are trying uh, to reach each community individually through this project, uh, which is East African Regional and Thematic Hub, trying to understand what are the basic needs, what are the basic problems the communities are faced in areas. Also, um, the Unstandardized languages have different uh, varieties that are difficult to deal with. Sometimes when we are crying, like, okay, these communities are not represented in languages, these languages sometimes they do lack, uh, you know, written materials that can be used to digitize them. Also, um, there are our fellow community members uh, users of sign languages, sometimes we are like uh, difficult to engage them in one of the one or two of the wiki activities. Next slide. This slide, Cornelius. Yes, so our future goals and the projects that we are working on is we are trying to bridge the content. And this is, uh, we are working in the area of innovating in free knowledge to see what are the basic, what are the basic level of new ways that we can come up with to uh, tackle the problem of lack of content on our local African languages as well as on Swahili Wikipedia. So we are trying to break the participation barriers uh, from the underrepresented communities by having a structure that uh, acts as an umbrella for all of us to learn, uh, share knowledge, share resources, and so on. Also, we are trying to see what are the topics that uh, really matters to our region, and as well as, uh, as I said, innovate in free knowledge, coming, allow people to come with new innovative ways how we can solve our problems in our region, East Africa. Next slide. Yes, yeah, so that's in a nutshell. That's what I can say, and that's what we are doing in East Africa currently. And just to finalize, our project currently is on the phase of planning and research. We want to investigate more. We have we want to do some more detailed research to understand whether the people in East Africa 
being called the East African Regional Informatic Hub. And what do they think, whether it can be a solution to their problems? So if you will have some questions, I'll be happy to answer later. I can end here for now. Thank you. Back to you, Yo. Thank you very much, Anthony. Definitely interesting to hear what's coming out of um, the research at the moment and how you are planning um, to engage with the communities further down the line. Um, it would be nice to see how um, the East Africa group uh, or the East Africa region sort of comes uh, comes together at a later point and what um, people end up prioritizing. I do have a question, but we'll save that for the end of the session. For everyone who's listening, don't forget, while a speaker is speaking, don't, uh, you can drop in your question. Um, and I'll ask those questions um, when they're done. There are no questions that I see in the chat at the moment, so we'll go straight to our next speaker, um, and that is Nikki. Nikki, over to you. Thank you, Yop. Thanks for the opportunity to share today. And um, I am working as part of the um, Movement Strategy and Global Relations team at Wikimedia Germany. And in that capacity, I contributed to the project that we are talking about today. And that project is called the Capacity Exchange. Can you go to the next slide? slide? Thank you. So the capacity exchange is a project which right now is being looked at for doing in Europe, but we're also, um, the, the concept can be used anywhere and it can be scaled to any region or in, in fact to the entire Wikimedia movement at some point. Um, so the idea uh, is was developed in response or basically comes out of the movement strategy recommendation number six, where it says, uh, develop a peer matching platform so people can exchange capacities uh, with each other. And capacities here means skills, knowledge, um, resources, um, all kinds of things that you as a comedian may have, know, um, or have access to um, that another Wikimedian might benefit from. So the idea is really that the wisdom and the experience and the knowledge is in the movement and we just need to find ways to find it from somewhere. Um, and the way that we're trying to do that is by creating a, a platform. Sorry, I'm dealing with a cat here that's being very... Um, <laughs> um, so the, the, the idea is to have a platform the way you can go on and you can enter your information, you can enter your profile, just like the platforms, and then you can add people you want to share with the people in the movement, and then vice versa, that is searchable by people who are looking for things, for knowledge, for tools, for templates, for maybe a coach or a mentor. Um, or a grant writer, for example. Um, so basically the exchange facilitates finding each other. And then what happens after that? We haven't really thought about that part yet too much, but uh, what happens after that is basically up to the people so they can support each other. Um, so where we are at right now with this project is we have created a what software developers call a minimum viable product. So we have used an existing software platform that was called the Open Educational Resources World Map and have just changed the categories and uh, the word and some of the interfaces in it. It's on our own cloud, Wikimedia Cloud. And we're like this close to having users test it. We still have to do a few things and a few translations, um, but at definitely um, next, no, the, two weeks from now, we'll have a smaller user group test it. And then um, 
we also have a little clinic at the Wikimedia Summit in September where other people can test it. And that we do that, so we can receive some feedback both on how does it work, does it make sense, does it feel all right, and also um, um, so for the user experience feedback as well as and on the categories um, that are in the platform. Um, once we receive that feedback, I think we see the project moving to a next stage where we will probably need some more software development, you know, improve it, make it better, launch it for, for basically all Wikimedians who want to try using it and um, finding a fiscal home for the for this next phase. So that's currently our challenge is to find a um, an affiliate who would like to be the applicant for a movement strategy implementation grant and take this to the next level. Um, and that seems to be harder than we thought <laughs> to find that affiliate. But we really feel like the next phases should be staffed, so there should be somebody taking care of the project. And um, we can no longer do it with a group of volunteers or people who have a you know, very limited amount of time to put into this. Uh, now you can go to the next slide. Oh, this is our logic model. <laughs> so I'm not going to walk you through that because it's, it's you're going to have a headache and it's like really small on this too. Uh, but you can find that logic model and other uh, information um, about the capacity exchange and how to contact us uh, on our meta page, of course. And if you would like to be part of the test user group, we'd love to welcome you. We have like a session for that on August 26th. So uh, send us a a note and we'll add you to the test user group. So challenges, I wasn't sure if this question was about the challenges we're trying to address with our project or the challenges that we're trying to face, that we're facing as we're trying to, to do this project. So, um, but one challenge that we definitely see and that also has been discussed um, during movement strategy, um, uh, during the writing of the recommendations um, is can we get people in the movement to use a platform that is not meta? Um, full knowing, full well knowing that meta does not have the features um, that we are looking for in this platform. You know, we're looking for more interactive features and um, a, a certain level of curation as well. So it's not this project, we don't see it happening on a wiki um, because we want it to be searchable. We want people to be findable. And um, so for, for a number of reasons, and also because during movement strategy formation, a lot of people who, who provided input into the skills and leadership development topics said, please use something else. Let's not use Meta for this. Um, the same goes for the knowledge base that's also part of strategy recommendation six. So we're sticking our head out that window and going to see if people will accept the not meta thing that we're doing. Um, and again, another challenge is finding a temporary home for the project. So like a fiscal sponsor or somebody who wants to write that grant and administer and incubate it, so to speak, through the next phase. So if you are running a chapter, wink, wink, to Norway, and you want to you wanna run this project for the next couple of years before then, I see it, and that's just my vision, but I see it being added to a hub at some point or becoming part of a capacity building hub. So I, I see those this next phase as a temporary phase as well. So um, that's basically what I wanted to share with you today. Um, if you're coming to the Wikimedia Summit, please join our testers. If you want to um, do that before August 26th, send us a message through our meta page. And we're super excited testing this, um, this project and seeing if it can help really sort of build the social capital and build mutual aid and solidarity and connections across our movement so we can really become a movement um, where people have an opportunity to support each other. Thank you. Oh, what have I learned? Duh. Okay. <laughs>
there's only so much you can achieve as volunteers. Um, that's basically, I said this, you know, we're a small group of volunteers, Wikimedia Ireland, Wikimedia Netherlands, um, uh, Croatia and, and Germany. And at this point, we need to move the project onto more solid footing. And so we need to be clear about the resources for the next phase of the project. But this is all sort of project mechanics. What's important is that we try this and that Wikimedians make use of it. Thank you. Now I'm done. <laughs> well, all right. <laughs> um, thank you very much, Nikki. This is an interesting project. Um, and, you know, uh, I, I did get the opportunity to look through um, the diagram that um, was too tiny and complicated. But for anyone who's interested, I would say take the time to look through that diagram. It's a really interesting theory of change um, is the way I would put it. Um, Nikki, would you agree? Uh, it's yeah. a really interesting theory of change. I think um, anyone would do well to take a good look at it, especially if you're um, sort of um, interested in uh, skills, in capacity exchange at some level um, and interested in seeing how your communities can find the the best tools and resources to build their own capacities um, and see how that would work taking a systems lens approach within the movement. Thank you very much, Nikki, um, for sharing that. Um, we will, uh, do we have any questions? I think we do have one question here. There's, there's one question from Tila. Can you, can you read it or should I read it out for you? Oh, it's super um, tiny. So you can read it out. I think, I think I can read it. Um, I, I, zoomed in i got found the trick on feed loop you can zoom <laughs> during a session so the question nikki is regarding not using meta for their project could ms forum be useful for you in any way and if yes how hmm um i think not because we're we're that's a it, it's a different animal i think ms forum is a forum for conversation whereas the capacity exchange is basically a database. So it's a database of, um, of people and organizations and skills and resources. Um, and so in, the, in that sense, it's not a social network. Um, I think I can see it you know, being complementary to the forum for sure and being complementary to the knowledge base, whoever is going to hopefully build that in the near future. Um, but yeah, I, I don't, unless the forum has like secret magic powers that I haven't figured out yet, but I, what we're really looking at is it is creating a database. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, secret magic powers to the MS forum. Let's add that to platform upgrades, please. Um, thank you very much, Nikki, for sharing. Um, and without any further questions on queue at the moment, we'll go to our last but definitely not the least speaker is uh, in the section. Mali, over to you. Hello. <laughs> Thank you, Yop. Um, Thank you for the introduction. And uh, uh, I just want to start with uh, Nikki. I will follow up uh, on that. <laughs> uh, we'll definitely sign up for the user group. It sounds uh, very interesting. But for now, uh, my name is Mali, I'm from Wikimedia Norge, and today I am going to uh, present to you the Language Diversity Hub uh, project. So uh, you can go to the next slide, please. Um, uh, we launched the idea of the Language Diversity Hub last year and without really knowing what a hub is or going to be or what it is. Um, and maybe it will totally change the name. Um, it's not so important. What we have seen for a long time, and not only we in Wikimedia Norge, when I say we, we are a group of, of many people from different language communities uh, that has been involved in um, the small and the new uh, language versions of Wikipedia. And what has been clear for a long time is that there are challenges, there are barriers, it's difficult to be a small language, and especially an indigenous language with all the extra you might have um, in the history. So there is a need in the movement to take care of those languages. And when the movement strategy initiatives came and the uh, hubs was a part of that, uh, 
that is like an open door we grasped it so the language diversity hub might be something else than a hub but for now we are using uh, that name uh, just to have that clear um, if you want to know more uh, we had actually a presentation earlier today in one of the other tents it was my colleague Jon Harald and uh, also Sadiq presenting and they will go more um, deep into the research we are into but um, Last year, we applied for a movement strategy implementation grant, and we had this enormous ambition of being a fantastic support structure to make it easy for small languages to have their own Wikipedia. Um, but uh, to get there, we kind of have to know what their problems are. So we decided we are going to do, we want to identify what the small languages think of as barriers when they are uh, trying to use Wikipedia. Um, and to do that, we decided, well, we have to talk to them. So we are doing 13 group interviews, um, I mean, with 13 different language communities that we have specifically chosen for this purpose and to make them tell us in their own words um, what is difficult. What, uh, or not only what is difficult, but what is working. We want to talk to them about their motivations. We want to understand how is the process that they write in Wikipedia. Through this, we hope to find um, specific technical barriers that we can solve, hopefully quite quickly. We will hope to find things that where we can make one solution that fits many. And we hope that we might find that someone has solved something in one corner of the world and that solution can be shared amongst other because that is when we are a hub because in the end, the hub is, is bridges and multiple bridges where traffic and information flows freely. Um, so this very much resonates with what Nikki has been talking about that we are a um, and I actually, I wrote on what you said, we have so much knowledge and wisdom in this movement, but we don't know how to make it flow uh, well to the ones who really need it. And uh, with all the language barriers that are between um, those uh, um, smaller language communities, um, the flow is even harder. So, um, so that's it, challenges. We want to see the barriers that are limiting uh, smaller language communities to really thrive on Wikipedia, to really use those fantastic tools that we have. We want to explore how we can be a hub, a multilingual hub moving between all the continents and, and all these languages. And of course, we want to work towards knowledge equity and equity in decision making. We want to make the money also flow towards where it needed um, so it can be used in the way that is best for the communities in whatever ways we can do that. Um, so, of course, everything that uh, uh, Anthony was saying earlier today is, is, I mean, we are all, we are so many actually working with the same issues, but we are on so many different levels. And, and that is definitely also a challenge. We are trying to be a part of the solution here. How can all of us that are working with the same thing come together and build the same bridge instead of building many small bridges uh, and not knowing about each other. Um, yes, please, the next slide. And I'm sorry if I'm talking too fast. I have a tendency to do that. Uh, what have we learned? Well, we haven't uh, gotten too many uh, research results or interviews back yet, so I don't have any like concrete uh, uh, problems that we are going to fix. Uh, but what we have definitely learned is that there are so many other groups uh, thinking the same thoughts, uh, working towards, I mean, wanting um, something like this language diversity hub. Um, and we see that we have to do a lot of work aligning to make sure that everyone is included and to make sure that everybody hears uh, about us too. So we are not establishing tons of similar structures um, when we could actually work together. Um, we are getting good feedback. Uh, so we are sure that a structure like the Language Diversity Hub is needed. Uh, but of course, we are very open to 
develop it further. And of course, that is what this uh, grant is about. So we are very open for everyone who wants to join, for everyone who wants to um, tell us, share an idea. Um, yeah. Um, we have one more collaboration uh, going on uh, with Wikitongues. So we have gotten a grant together with them. And I want to invite others who want to do projects and are not sure how to do it alone to, to um, contact us and maybe we can do th stuff together. Mm. Yeah, because uh, collaboration is a key here. Can you move on, please? Um, yes, so the, f the first uh, um, the first project, the first goal here now is, is to be a, a loudspeaker, an amplifier. I feel, uh, especially in the beginning of this process, um, that it was very common to say, mm -hmm, we have this problem, we have put it in fabricator, we have been saying this needs to be fixed, and no one listens. Uh, it doesn't come through, it, it's not prioritized because maybe it's a tiny little group or a person that don't know enough people that are saying it and they don't come through. So we hope that we can be that kind of amplifier to put all the voices together to make sure that um, the technological solutions are being prioritized to make, uh, to make change, uh, changes faster to suit the smaller language communities. Um, I have called it short term and long term, it might be the wrong terminology, but at least a short term goal is to be bridging the gaps in content, bridging the la uh, gaps in, in participation for wiki projects by finding solutions to make more people being able to participate. So that is something that we are working on that we will be working on all the time and and more when we actually know what might be limiting for people the long-term goal with this whole project is that it's an independent structure we are many and i'm not going to start naming names because i'm afraid to forget someone but we have handpicked um a, like an interim steering committee last year after we organized the arctic nuts uh, conference and uh, we have chosen people who have um knowledge who have passion who have a track record who have worked with um, language diversity for a while. So we knew, we knew they knew a lot and they had issues. They had things they wanted to be fixed. So they have already been saying this needs to be done, this needs to be done. Um, and the long term goal is that Wikimedia Norge is not going to be the, 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 the horse pulling this wagon. It's an independent unit within our movement that is governed by good democratic structures as a proper Wikimedia something. So um, it's an honor to be in a tiny little affiliate up here in the uh, north, not so cold at the moment, but colder than most of the world. Uh, and to be able to pull this forward, like Cornelius was mentioning earlier, this is an important thing for our movement and i look forward to set the sails and and see more people aboard and see where we are are gonna reach yes i think uh, that was all for me uh, yep thanks you for listening and uh, i look forward for questions Thank you very much as well, Mali. Thank you so much. Um, your work is always super interesting um, and always definitely interesting to learn um, what you are learning as you're speaking and um, engaging in our communities. Um, I'm looking in the chat. Do we have any questions? Um, I see one from Tilla. Is that a question? Oh, okay. Tilla just added some more information. Um, for those who might be interested. All right, so we have 15 minutes uh, uh, left to go in the session today. I do have a few questions and don't forget, you can drop questions in the chat for our speakers. I'll come back to you, Anthony, um, from what you shared earlier on, while you shared about what you were learning. I'm curious if there are any further insights on the users of sign language. Um, you mentioned that they're difficult to engage with, 
Are there anything, is there anything that you're finding? Um, are there any pieces that are coming through? It doesn't have to be. Hello, Anthony, did you get my question? Sorry, Yop, I think there was a delay a bit. Can you repeat again? Okay. Um, so the question was uh, about, you know, from what you shared about what you're learning, um, you mentioned about insight, you mentioned something about um, users of sign language. Um, I find often that sometimes we, we mention languages, sign language is not on that list too often. It's like Yop is breaking up. Is Yop just frozen for me or is it all for you, for you guys too? Okay. For all of us. Um, Anthony, did you get the question that uh, she, she was trying to phrase? No. Okay. okay. Anyway, you she, said, she was asking um, about language speakers and why it is difficult to work with them and what you've learned uh, about working with them. All right. Thank you for the. Okay. So, if Cornelius, can you rephrase again the question from you because she did break at the end. Um. She, she found it very interesting. She, she was about to say that um, the, she was interested in the insights on the uses of sign language. And, um, and she said uh, that you've mentioned that they are difficult to engage with. You have said this. And so do you have any ideas how to engage them in the wikis, on wiki? All right. So uh, I said... Um... One of the areas that we are seeking to work on through this project that we are, we are doing currently, which is East African General Thematic, is trying to invest on the area of uh, innovating in free knowledge. So the Wikimedia movement so far is trying hard to include everyone within this movement. Uh, irrespectively of the physical status or mental status or something. So it becomes um, something interesting to find out. I don't have answers yet, but this is one of the things that we want to find out through this project. Like how do we uh, bridge this uh, knowledge, language gaps uh, through these people who are not conversing with us through the traditional ways that we use. So what I can say is uh, maybe after this project, we can come up with some ideas from people, from the community members, because that's what exactly we're going to do, engage them, uh, listen to them, what are the, are the problems facing the communities and how they think this thing, the innovation or the uh, regional thematic hub can help them. So. We are trying to find out. I don't have the clear answers for now, but it is what we are trying to find. How can we make everyone inclusive in this movement? I don't know if you quite did answer your question. And at some point, it's uh, quite yes. interesting. Yes, it's an additional point. You find that uh, there is a, you have the you want to include the people, maybe let's say on uh, wiki editathons uh, to create some content or something. But the problem is how do you communicate with them? How do you teach them? We, the trainers ourselves, we don't know sign languages. And there is a real scarcity of these people who knows uh, sign languages. But I hope 
and I have confidence that uh, as we go, as long as we, we set some good environment for these people to be found to help us on these areas, someday at some time we can include them on this movement in any way. So let's stay tuned for that, for innovative ideas around that area. Thank you. Back to you, Yop. Thank you. Thank you, Anthony. Yes, it's like you said, like you said, um, we're, we're all learning and I've spoken, um, you know, with a few people from other communities, for instance, um, Tony and Kirill um, in Macedonia trying to address a similar, similar issue. I think my network is still a bit problematic, but if you can hear me, Cornelius, you, uh, I know you have a question for Mali. Maybe you can ask that. Uh, yeah, I can, uh, um, yeah, the question I had was, um, I was interested how you as a, as a, as a Wikimedia Norway, as the, as an affiliate in, in the so-called global North and Europe, uh, will ensure equity, um, in your future hub structure when dealing with small language communities that, um, let's say, um, yeah, in the so-called global South. How do you how do you manage the implicit or explicit power dynamics? Do you have an idea for that? Yes, uh, yeah, it's a very um, it is a very good question, and it's a very um, um, it's something we are very mindful of uh, constantly. So when we are we're putting together the the steering committee, we were trying to. I mean, we were really looking to have a balance, gender, uh, global south, uh, different kinds of communities. Um, and so I'm not sure if it can ever be perfect, but I think the most important is that to keep that constant, I mean, to keep asking ourselves who is not represented now and who needs to be here and who is not at the table. And, and be actively asking because it's easy to be easy to become blind and say, hey, but we are doing a good job and this is fine. But we always have to be just um, asking the questions here, having the discussions within the group. Um, and of course, we are a very privileged country up in the north. But an advantage is that we also are a pretty small language. We are good in English. Um, so that's a huge advantage being in Norway, but we know how it is to be small in some parts. We are, nobody else speaks Norwegian, why would they? Um, we have two written languages in Norway, so, so we can always um, somehow know how it is to be um, kind of um, on the sideline. But we are so privileged in so many other ways, and we are trying to use that privilege to lift up the other voices. So I hope that it will not be me presenting this for many years in the future. We need, uh, uh, we want others to be representing. And we have that. Um, yeah. It's a good question, though, Cornelius. No, thank you. Thank you. I, I hope that share more next, next year's Wikimania. Like, interesting to see. If you could, besides the work on the hub, um, share these reflections uh, on, the, on that level, on that question, because I think that's something yeah. many others can learn from. Hmm. So, yo, yo, back to you, sorry. <laughs> I think you're muted, um, Yo. Okay. Um, sorry about that. I was saying yes, the conversation is super interesting. So it was um, nice to listen to you um, both. And interesting thoughts there, Mali. John, who's um, John, who's in the chat, says there's a test Wikipedia in American Sign Language um, in the Wikimedia incubator. And there's a link there. Um, it would be good for... And, um, by the way, Jan works with... Uh, is co uh, co project partner with Mali on this project, so he's sharing some updates, some more updates from the project. Um, I do have a question now for for you, Nikki. Um, uh, this is, you know, just regarding the next 
strengthen the plans for the capacity exchange program. Um, you, you put out a call to action for affiliates that might be interested in, in taking this forward. So I'm curious, um, while I know uh, Mali has said yes, that for others who might be interested, uh, what might an affiliate consider or put take to, you know, um, like what are the criteria? What would be needed? Uh, what kinds of capacities might be needed to implement this uh, this work? And um, uh, besides perhaps interest, yeah. But what are you looking out for? Um, and what do you think of, an affiliate should think about if they think of taking this forward? Yeah, I mean, we're certainly open to, to anyone who feels passionate about capacity building and, and you know wants to take this forward. I'm hoping that we can find an affiliate with um, capacity. So uh, one of the things we talked about in the capacity building working group is that capacity building initiatives for the Wikimedia movement are always so fleeting and they're never sustainably funded and, and they're never sustained and you know somebody does something on meta and then some people fill it out and then it's gone again and um so there was a very strong sentiment that this needs to be um, sustainably funded and for me part of that is also um sustainably staffed so a person who's more than a contractor, but a person who has some job security through the funding and has, you know, maybe a two year time frame to take it to the next level. Um, that would that would be ideal. <laughs> Obviously, we can't always have ideal, so we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, but I yeah, I'd like to see that sort of sustainability and continuity and stability mostly, I guess, um, for, for the next phase of the project. And um, yeah, so, so an, an affiliate who has, you know, the ability to hire a person and pay benefits and, um, uh, and sustain this project for a couple of years. All right. Okay. Sustainability and making sure that this that this can be handled for the next couple of years. I would, you know, we have about two minutes to go and we're about wrapping up on this. We'll just sort of throw out something open to our speakers today. Um, if there's, Mali, if there's anything you'd like to, based on the conversation so far um, and what you shared. Yeah, I just, I want to pick up this on sustainability from Nikki because that is one of the things we see that when we as an affiliate can run, can push this um, language hub forward, we secure that sustainability for a while uh, to get it going. So um, for other initiatives, um, I see that, I mean, that is a huge advantage that we have and uh, we are very grateful and very uh, conscience and I see that yeah for other strategies as important super important to um, secure that so uh, I hope you find it <laughs> and please um, contact us <laughs> <laughs> absolutely and Anton yes thank you uh, thank you yes I have something to say and it is one thanks uh, to my fellow colleagues uh, who are the core team on organizing or working on East African Regional Thematic Hub, Douglas Isebagala and Winnie Kabinte. They have been supportive. Also to thank all communities that are involved, East African communities. I encourage them to be staying tuned for the upcoming research and the planning for this project. So thank you. That's all from me for now. Thank you too, Anthony. And final words from you, Nikki? Oh my God, the pressure. <laughs> um, <laughs> thanks so much for this for the session. I want to thank the co-conspirators in this capacity exchange project, and I hope to, to have lots and lots of more join us.
Thank you. All right. Who's listened in today? Um, the session slides will be uploaded on Commons and have been uploaded to the programs as well. Uh, feel free to reach out to the Movement Strategy and Governance team to discuss any inspiring ideas you might have for uh, for your community. Um, thank you, Cornelius. Throwing out some questions. My has been my partner and support in all three lightning talk sessions. And I tell you, it wouldn't go as fantastically it is as, gone, as it has gone without Cornelius. So thank you so much, Cornelius. He's the man and the voice behind the slides um, as well. Uh, don't forget, you can also reach the Movement Strategy and Governance team. You can reach us via email um, at any time to discuss your ideas, discuss your plans that are related to Movement Strategy implementation. Thank you, everyone.